Now at 6, authorities in Joplin look into a recent uptick in air conditioner damage. Plus, area first responders have some safety tips for pedestrians, young and old. And it's been more than one year since the city of Joplin started its park ranger program. I'm Samantha Walker, and tonight on KOAM News, learn more about the role of a ranger and the situations they address. The four states most watched news starts now. Joplin police warned the public of a rise in air conditioner vandalism. This is KOM News at 6. I'm Amber Jenkins. Thieves are vandalizing air conditioning units to steal copper metal and get money for it. The Joplin Police Department is urging the public to conceal their AC units or install an alarm system. Less of a chance of being victimized. It's doing things like trying to conceal uh, your AC unit as best you can, uh, having exterior lighting uh, around your home, uh, security cameras. Uh, people are even going as far as putting uh, external metal cages around an AC unit. We'll have more in this story tonight on KOM News at 10. Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us with the first look at weather. Well, it turned out to be a nice Monday for us today. Temperatures pretty good across the region a little bit warmer than what we had yesterday most of us have been sitting into lower 80s on the missouri and also the arkansas side and then once you get into kansas and oklahoma we get into the mid to upper 80s and that's where we're sitting out there right now we do have a lot of cumulus clouds we've had some isolated little thunderstorms mainly in our far southern county so we're looking across benton county but besides that most of us are going to stay dry as we go through the evening hours. We do have a weak little wave kind of rotating through. So over the next couple days, we're going to have some very hit and miss little pop up storms. But just like today, you can see a few popping up at about 9 to 930 this evening. Once we kind of lose the heating of the day, they really start to die out. We'll slide back through the 80s, 70s, mid 60s later on tonight. Of course, we're going to look at your work week here in a bit. KDOT Southeast Kansas is hosting an upcoming public meeting concerning the future of US 69 in Crawford County. KDOT says the focus of the meetings will be on the intersection of US 69 and K103 in Cherokee County. The meeting is a follow up to a study conducted by the department. Two meeting takes place tomorrow, the first one at the Pittsburgh Auditorium from 11 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon. The later meeting takes place from 4 to 6 p.m. at Pittsburgh High School. We have a complete list of upcoming meetings on our website, komnewsnow.com. It only takes a split second for something to go wrong when crossing the street. In order to minimize the risk, the Pittsburgh Police Department wants to share some safety tips for pedestrians of all ages, but especially children. They say stay alert and don't focus on electronic devices, make eye contact with the drivers if entering traffic, and use a crosswalk when the possibility to cross the street. Important to realize that people are going to work trying to get their morning commute, get their kids to school and get to work as kids are trying to walk and ride their bikes to school. So I see many times out that kids are piled up at the crosswalk and wait for someone to wave them across the road before they start because, you know, they're young and they're nervous. So it's important to teach your kids once they get to the crosswalk and the car stop, if there's a stop sign, when the car stops, they have now the right of way. We have even more safety tips for pedestrians on our website, kamnewsnow.com. Pittsburgh State University's Nature Reach had an exhibit at the May Leslie Community Center in Chautauqua today. Kids of all ages were welcome to learn about several different animal adaptations. Animals that were on display and utilized in the program range from snakes and salamanders to Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Part of Nature Reach is to provide programming for the local communities, for public schools and public libraries. And we also will do uh, private homeschooling groups as well. The free event aimed to inform children about different animals they may already be familiar with, many of which can be already found in the wild in their native state of Kansas. It's been more than one year since the city of Joplin created its park ranger program. But does the community know what the job does? KOM Samantha Walker sat down with a park ranger to learn more about what they do and the problems they address. Just the fact that I could be outside, roaming around, socializing with people. If you visited a public park in Joplin in the past year, you might have noticed someone new. Ethan Yates is a city park ranger, a role that makes him a frequent presence at more than 20 parks in Joplin. 
I love taking my kids to the park, so I just saw an opportunity where I could make things a lot better so everyone could enjoy the parks as much as I do. According to the Director of Parks and Recreation, the Park Ranger program was created after community members brought up concerns about safety. The presence of park rangers is intended to help make people feel more safe at parks. They uh, patrol all of our parks, um, look, you know, make sure there's nothing um, out of the ordinary that's going on. Um, they help with preventative uh, measures um, when it comes to maintenance. You know, they might see something before our, our parks division does, so they report those. According to city officials, the effects of the park ranger role can already be seen. We get compliments all the time. Um, People are saying when they see them in the parks, they feel safer in our parks. Um, they, they notice that um, like, you know, when, when things are vandalized or, or broken, they, they notice that our park division is able to get to them sooner because our park rangers actually point those out and report those kind of things so we can um, be uh, uh, f faster uh, in getting those things fixed. According to city officials, park rangers can act as an alternative to the police department. They say this is an important role because police can often be overwhelmed. I think the police department um, is very thankful for, for this program. Um, it allows them to do um, focus on other areas um, other than just having to patrol our parks. I mean, that's just, they have such a responsibility in, in the city of Joplin and our community, the park rangers. Um, help them so they can do other things. For rangers like Yates, it's a great feeling to help the parks improve for the people who use them. Things are definitely getting better. Um, and once people realize like how nice and neat they are, they're going to continue to want to keep them that way. And while the role may be relatively new, it's one he hopes to keep for a very long time. I'm going to retire from this. <laughs> I figure if I do, maybe they'll give me an official park ranger bench in one of the parks, throw my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting in Joplin, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. The Director of Parks and Recreation says he hopes to see the program continue to grow for years to come. If you have a problem or concern about a city park, you can submit a comment on the City of Joplin's website. The Joplin Outlaws look to improve their place in the Mid-American League. Sports Director John Dales has that story and more coming up. But first, the Show Me State has some ballot decisions to make after President Biden's decision to end his campaign for re-election. It's been more than 50 years since a sitting president decided not to run for re-election, but it wasn't disclosed to the presidential election. Chris Bryant looks at how the November ballot process will work in Missouri. Of course, a lot of conversations going on since the, the big news yesterday, but you know, we're, they all start with just a gigantic thank you and, and recognition of the character of Joe Biden. Democrats are hoping to get a nominee in place to avoid a broken convention in August. Time is not our friend here. A lot of things happen have to happen really fast. Uh, we're just barely over 100 days uh, ahead of us uh, in this election and even, you know, a handful of days before these deadlines uh, with the potential roll call and the convention. In the state of Missouri. We will uh, revisit what the law says. Uh, this, I don't know that something like this has ever happened or has happened in the history of our current Missouri Constitution. When it comes to what your ballot will look like in Missouri come November, Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft says state statute has the final say. Well, under Missouri law, the Democrat National Convention is used to decide who their nominee will be for president. So legally, uh, they have not uh, transmitted to us uh, President Joe Biden as their nominee, so they can still transmit whoever they want to. Which is different than a president becoming incapacitated. Actually, there are in-law provisions for when a candidate dies. Um, a candidate just realizing that he's incapable of serving and using that to decide that they shouldn't run for re-election is, is a lot different. While all sides wait for the official nominee. If folks are looking for a way to get involved here, if they were thinking about setting, you know, sitting this election out because uh, they didn't like their choices or they didn't, you know, the, wanted to, you know, see something else, uh, this is going to be something else. Ohio requires that in order to be on the ballot for the November election, a party must certify the names of the president and vice president candidates 90 days before the November election. 
That date is after the Democratic no National Convention. A little later, the Cards and Royals hit the diamond for some Monday baseball. John Dells has a preview coming up in sports. Plus, we're going to have a slow warming trend as we go through the next few days. We're going to look at that coming up. Well, it turned out to be a nice Monday for us today. Temperatures are pretty good across the region. We've been in a nice little stretch over about the past week or so. If we look back at July so far, you can see week one, we had temperatures mainly above normal, except for a Friday that stands out. Week two, a little below normal and then above normal, but no extreme heat really this month. I mean, it was pretty hot early last week, but we've been below normal ever since then. We are going to see a slow warming trend slowly as we go through the next several days. Let's go outside. Here's a nice shot of our Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex Tower Cam. We are looking off toward the north and to the east through downtown. Looks good. Temperatures not bad. We have low 80s on the Missouri side and then we have some middle 80s once you get out across Oklahoma and also parts of southeastern Kansas. Also at the same time, our humidity, it's not too bad. Dew points kind of sitting 60 to about 65 degrees. So if you look at our scale, it's kind of in that not bad to somewhat sticky range. And we're going to sit there as well as we go through the next couple days. All right, we're going to slide back through the 80s, 70s into the mid 60s. A little bit later on tonight, we have had some isolated little thunderstorms, mainly in our southern counties with some cumulus clouds that have popped up. Maybe a sprinkle or two, but most of us have stayed dry. Most of us are going to stay dry as we go through the evening hours, but we are going to have some hit and miss storms kind of out there as we go through the next couple days. Still, our upper level flow is out of Canada, so it gives us that cooler air. We have these weak little waves rotating around. And it keeps that big upper level high out toward the west, and that's where you want it because when that does move back in, that's when our heat will really start to increase once again. All right, mid 60s tonight, so a good start in the morning. We're going to go into lower 80s by noon. Once we get into the afternoon, most of us 85, 86, 87 degrees. And again, you can see those hit and miss isolated little thunderstorms trying to get going as we get into the afternoon hours. Anything that would pop up would die down once we lose the heating of the day, and then it will be dry as we go Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, starting again into the mid to upper 60s. As we go through the day on Wednesday, once again, a pop up random isolated thunderstorm trying to get going, but most of you will end up staying dry. But temperature is a little warmer as we top out right around 90 degrees. All right, Tuesday, 66 in the morning, 81 by noon, 85 by four, isolated storm, high temp, 85 degrees. Let's go down the road. Our temperatures, we get into low to mid 90s on Thursday. And then they should back down just a little bit on Friday to near 90. But look at this. We get some scattered thunderstorms Friday afternoon. And then even into Saturday, we'll have some scattered thunderstorms across the region. Hopefully, we can squeeze out a little bit of rain. We'll definitely need it. 87 for you tomorrow. 90 on Wednesday. Let's go 92 on Thursday. I mean, that's right where we should be for this time of the year. And then hanging out near 90 as we head into the weekend. Warming up a bit early next week, mid 90s, upper 90s to near that triple digit mark by the middle of next week. Well, I know you said it's not very humid, but my hair disagrees with you. It's a little sticky. I can so. feel my hair just already expanding. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Still ahead, the city, Kansas City Cardinals. Oh, this is still ahead. The Kansas City Royals and the St. Louis Cardinals both try to keep their winning streaks alive. And a look ahead at tomorrow's MIAA football preseason kickoff. John Dales has those stories and more up next. College football season begins in just over a month. Missouri Southern and Pittsburgh State both begin their 2024 football seasons in week zero, which gives D2 teams the ability to play a full 11 game schedule and include a bye week. Uh, tomorrow, we hear from Missouri Southern, Pittsburgh State, and the rest of the MIAA Conference for the first time since last season. The 2024 edition of MIAA Football Media Day takes place in downtown Kansas City. 
MIAA Commissioner Mike Racy is the first one to speak in the morning. Pittsburgh State will be represented by first year head coach Tom Anthony, along with a couple two time captains, fifth year senior, senior quarterback Chad Dodson and sixth year All American linebacker Jack Barkley. Missouri Southern will be bringing head coach Atiba Bradley, senior wide receiver Akeem Gilmore, and redshirt junior linebacker Zach Bergman. Throughout the entire day, we'll have complete coverage on Facebook, Twitter, and the sports page on our website, koamnewsnow.com. Well, the entire Mid-America Baseball League has the day off. There are just three weeks remaining in their regular season. The Joplin Outlaws have turned things around in recent days to help improve their playoff seating. After a shaky start to the month of July, the Outlaws have won three games in a row and seven of their last eight, which brings their overall record on the season to 25 and 24. Here's a look at the most recent standings in the 16 Mid-America League. Joplin back to second place due to its current winning streak. Abilene seems like it has first place all but locked up. The Piney Woods and Fort Smith, both of them hot on the Outlaws trail third and fourth place. They have 19 regular season games left to play over the next 19 days before the playoffs are scheduled to begin on Monday, August 12th. Switching gear to Major League Baseball, the St. Louis Cardinals took two out of three from the Braves in Atlanta over the weekend. Tonight they begin another road trip, this time within the NL Central Division. First game of the series tonight in Pittsburgh. As we come on the air, the score 0-0 in the second inning. The Cardinals have won four out of their six games against the Pirates so far this year. Pittsburgh just two games behind the Redbirds in the National League wildcard standings. I'll have the final score from this one later tonight. Well, the Royals had a good weekend as well. They swept the Chicago White Sox by a combined score of 17 to three over three games. Tonight, KC begins a new series at Kauffman Stadium against a playoff contender. Royals play host to the Diamondbacks. This three game series will be the only time these two play each other this season. Kansas City's ace Cole Reagans is the expected starting pitcher. He is a sub two ERA in the month of July so far. First pitch in Kansas City scheduled for about 45 minutes from now. But out of the All-Star break, both the Cardinals and the Royals playing good baseball, both of them in playoff position. Hey, good luck to them. Of course. We'll be right back after this. Here is a look at what's coming up on KOM News at 9 on Fox 14. We'll have more on the air conditioner vandalism increase in Joplin, plus where the four states rank on Wallet Hub's list of the top school systems in the country. And we'll get an inside look at a facility studying what researchers hope to be the future of organ transplants. Those stories and a lot more tonight on KOM News at 9 on Fox 14. What's going on with the weather? Well, it looks pretty good as we go through the evening hours. We're going to slide back through the 80s, 70s into the mid 60s. A little warmer tomorrow. Random pop up thunderstorm. Most of us will stay dry all week long, but uh, just kind of hit and miss storms for us during the afternoon hours. But temperatures slowly warming up to right about 90 degrees. It's looking pretty hot. Yeah, it's normal. And what's going on with sports? Today's also day two of the Chiefs training camp in St. Joseph, Missouri. They're only about two and a half weeks away from their first preseason game. I know a lot of people are excited for college football. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll be right back here at 10. Let's make it a great evening.